All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're moving on with trauma. Now, before we can get on to the different kinds of shock and the trauma that you're going to experience with this exam if you don't take our course, we're going to go ahead and talk about SIRS criteria. Now, what is systemic inflammatory response syndrome? Well, SIRS are basically your physiologic response to an infection. And here are the four components. First of all, temperature. As soon as you're on the wards and you're walking along, morning rounds, oh, the blood pressure's okay. Oh, I see a temperature. Don't ignore it. Don't just think temperature, culture, temperature, culture, culture, temperature. You're not a robot. Think about what you're gonna do. If you notice that the patient's temperature is low, hypothermia or hyperthermia are all signs of a potential brewing infection. A t potential brewing infection can then lead to septic shock and I'll show you how in a moment. Heart rate, that is the second component of a systemic inflammatory response. Now notice, our normal heart rate is considered 60 to 100. However, in this person, a heart rate greater than 90 beats per minute is considered problematic. If the patient is breathing more than 20 beats per minute, something is going on with their ventilation and their breathing and their gas exchange. And so therefore, you as the clinician, you as the person sitting there in the Prometric Center taking this test should realize that something bad is brewing. And lastly, remember, white count going up or down are both findings. Remember, in patients who are elderly, they may not actually have a leukocytosis. They may become leukopenic. That's right, they become leukopenic. They lose their white cells. And why do old people lose their white cells? Because they also lost their glasses. Now, any of these criteria come into play, and if two of them together, so here's the magic number, two SIRS criteria together, you have those together, you are now considered sirs -y. That means you have systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Then you start investigating the patient and you see, oh, wait a minute, this person had two SIRS criteria, maybe their heart rate was up or maybe they're breathing too fast. And now you went ahead and got a chest x-ray. Chest x-ray shows, oh, right lower lobe infiltrate. Oh, they're elderly, oh, they can't swallow, oh, they aspirated. Now they have sepsis. Because you have two SIRS criteria, a source of infection, boom, you have sepsis. Now, if that same patient has two SIRS criteria and a source of infection, maybe they're breathing too fast, maybe their white count's too high. Now they have SIRS, the source is the urine. Oh my God, we left the catheter in too long. Now they have a cowdy. And on top of it all, they have a SIRS criteria, one and two, source of infection, and now they're confused and they have altered mental status. Right then and there, you have completed the definition to have severe sepsis. Severe sepsis, it's getting worse. But what if the patient has an elevated temperature, elevated breathing, heart rate's up, white count's low. Now they have SIRS criteria, and the source is positive blood cultures, and they have a new murmur, and they're altered, and they're having end organ dysfunction. That's right. If any of your organs don't work, that's considered end organ dysfunction. It could be any of them. In addition to that, the patient is hypotensive. And right then and there, ladies and gentlemen, they are in shock. They are in shock. And then if you give them fluids and they don't respond, they're in refractory shock and they're going to need vasopressors. What does this? Well, you remember back in step one and level one when you learned about different things? Yeah, that's right. You learned about the lipopolysaccharide layer and the gram negatives. Well, that's what does it. Those toxins cause you to have a systemic inflammatory response. And then as that systemic inflammatory response proceeds, you go from two SIRS criteria with a source giving you sepsis, add on organ dysfunction, severe sepsis, add on hypotension, shock. And that's how septic shock gets you. This is specifically for septic shock. Now, what are end organ dysfunctions? Well, let's go head to toe. Neurologic, brain, they're not thinking, altered mental status. Heart, hypotension. Kidneys, well, end organ dysfunction means your BU and creatinine's going up. Liver, their INR is going up because they have end organ dysfunction. They're not producing factors of coagulation. Their albumin's going down. The synthetic function is compromised. What else can tell you that the kidneys are not getting perfused? Urine output is dropping, heart rate's going up. These are all signs that the end organs are not getting perfused. The end organs are not getting confused. Chest pain, shortness of breath, hypotension, confusion. There's a reason why Dr. Fisher teaches you these sort of rhythmical, whimsical ways to remember things because it sits in your brain. Because on the day of the exam, you don't have time to think. 
you have time to heal and fix and get the question right. We're going to move on to our next section.